Okay guys, so race number is on and here we are. We have made the start line. <laughs> now to make the finish line. Sefu Jamal, he is super quick. He ran 14.33 uh, last week. And then I think second place did around 15.18. Um, so yeah, I'm hoping he's here this week so I have something to chase. I'm not quite there yet, definitely not. So at least it will give me a target. But I'm also hoping I, I don't land in no man's land. Business time. Okay, so before the race starts, I've done about six and a half k's to get to the park. A few strides, getting the body nice and warm and ready for as soon as that gun goes to make sure I'm firing on all cylinders. Boom, and it is go time. I'm going to relive this whole race experience and talk you through exactly what went through my mind as well as how I break down a 5k race. So what you couldn't see from this video is that I nearly actually tripped over at the start. There was quite a bit of pushing as soon as that gun went and I was just a reminder to myself at just how competitive these runners actually are. Here we are within the first few hundred meters of the race. I haven't checked my watch just yet but at this stage I was solo and what was going through my mind is that this is going to be a solo time trial. You versus you, let's go. And there, for the first time, I peeped at my watch. It's at a pace of 2.53 per kilometer. My goal at the start of this race was to go sub 15, so I need to average sub three minutes per K. So well ahead of schedule, feeling smooth. It is early days, um, but all about getting through that first kilometer, feeling strong. Okay, I can hear someone's behind me on my toes. I haven't looked back just yet to see who it is, but I can tell someone's there and I'm thinking, we got a race on our hands. Come on, let's go. When it comes to racing, I've realized that when you have someone just in front of you, next to you, or just behind you, it just allows you to really reach those levels that you're truly capable of, rather than if you had to do it as a solo time trial. At this point of the race, in this early stage, we are absolutely flying. We're going at 2.53 per kilometer pace still. I know that's actually faster than my 5K PB pace, uh, which is 2.55 per K. And I know it's probably not sustainable, but it feels smooth, so let's go with it while it lasts. Okay, now I'm well aware that this runner is from Hernhill Harriers, my second claim club and the first club that I joined when I moved to London. I've never met this guy before, so he must be a new kid on the block, but my word does he have a good stride, so I'll be sure to know who, exactly who he is after this race. I found out that his name is Morgan, and he's got a very, very bright future. Okay, here we get to our first kilometer split. We went through the 1K mark in 2.53. Had we sustained that, that would have put us on a 14.25 5K time which I know in my current shape and how I feel, I'm definitely not capable of at the moment. Okay, so we had banked quite a bit of time in that first kilometer, and I know that if we just averaged three minute Ks for the rest of the race, that would give us a time of 14.53. As you can see, Morgan is still in front of me. He's looking super, super smooth. The pace is good, so I'm gonna let him do his thing. He seems very relaxed, and I'm gonna sit comfortable here. The first kilometer for me is all about controlling the adrenaline, controlling the nerves and not going too deep into the red too early on what's going to be a long race. Active warm up is what I'm thinking. Okay, so kilometer two and kilometer three are a crucial part of a 5k. They basically set the standard for the race. You need to concentrate here. And what I'm thinking is grind, grind, grind. Stay focused, these kilometers. As you can tell, I'm one of the bigger and heavier runners around. In fact, I get people telling me all the time that they don't know someone who's 77 kilograms um, and breaks 15 minutes for 5Ks or runs a 2.20 marathon. But I have always lived by the theory, fuel hard, train hard, and in my case, lighter does not mean faster, stronger means faster. I've been able to remain injury free for the last four years, and I think a big part of that is by fueling sufficiently. Okay, stay solid, Nick. 
often I get asked how tall I am so I'm currently 185 centimeters or six foot one and as mentioned I weigh 77 kilograms at the moment we're 12 and a half weeks out from my main goal which is Berlin Marathon and I will most likely line up there at 75 or 76 kilograms whatever the weights I don't actually matter it'll happen naturally and that'll come with increased training okay back to business back to the race Morgan is looking incredibly smooth in this video and that's what I'm thinking and I know it's going to be a battle between the lighty Morgan and the more experienced runner myself and I'm just hoping when it comes to that last bit the experience pulls through. I can't hear third place and I haven't looked back. It's never a good idea to look back in a race, especially if you're feeling good. So I know it's a two horse race, but ultimately I just want to get that goal of sub 50. And just like that, we're at the two kilometer mark. Kilometer two was three minutes on the dot. So apart from that initial flying out the blocks, we've settled in quite nicely and we're looking good for the race ahead. Battersea Park is one of my best places in the world to race and as you can see we passed a few runners en route but the lead bike was doing a great job by ensuring we have a nice clear path ahead. Okay so already we're at that stage of the race where it's starting to feel tough. We're not even halfway and this is where the demons start coming into your head telling you Nick slow down you're not even halfway you can't sustain it that's where you got to block out those demons and say i know i can i know i can i've got this it seems like the more we get into this race the smoother and more comfortable morgan is looking and i'm thinking shall i stick with him or shall i just let him fade away a little bit and then just a few meters later, I think to myself, how on earth could I even think about that? Don't you dare let him go. Nick, you've got this. And I suppose that's running for you. You go through so many phases in such a short space of time, especially when your heart rate is high. And at the moment, my heart rate is already over 180. Just prior to this, Same I pulled up next go. to Morgan to try and get in front and share the work. However, he was not having it. He clearly put in the surge. He wanted to stay in front and I guess he's all about front running. Competition at its finest and bringing the absolute best out in each other is what it's all about at the moment. I guarantee you those people having a picnic in the park are watching us right now thinking, is this a choice? Did they choose to do this or did they lose a bet? We're exactly halfway into the race. From here on in, every step takes you closer towards the end. I'm thinking, can I sustain this for the second half? One last to go. Morgan is showing absolutely no signs of slowing down. He's looking good around the corners, good on the straights. But I'm thinking, I've done about a million laps of Battersea Park in my life. I've got half a lap left in this race. He's wearing Nike Vaporflies and I'm wearing my Adidas Adi Zero Pro 3s. A shoe I absolutely love and I use it pretty much from the 5k race distance all the way through to marathon distance. From analyzing the data afterwards, my cadence was around 180 for this run, which is exactly what you're looking for. And I know at this point in time, the last two Ks is coming in and things are gonna get real. For the first time in the race, I can sense the pace is slowing down just a little bit. I check my watch and the splits suggest the same things. Now I've got a decision to make. Do I sit comfy or do I try and make a break at this early stage? We're coming up to the third kilometer split over here. 301 and we're still tracking for a sub 15. Remember we banked a 253 first kilometer. Okay, this is the toughest kilometer of a 5k race. Kilometer three to four, 
that always tends to be my slowest on this occasion once again it was but all i'm thinking is hang in for dear life this kilometer that last kilometer never counts you can always find something you can smell the finish line So we well within the last two k's of the race and I am suffering and I think that's what a lot of us runners tend to forget. It's super hard for all of us but just know the people in front of you, next to you, around you, behind you are suffering just as much. We're all in the same boat, all doing the absolute best we can for our current fitness state and ability. heading towards the business end of the race almost one mile to go and I'm thinking do I make my break now remember I tried to overtake Morgan early on in the race and he simply wasn't having it one mile to go now now is the time I decide to break and I overtake with intent hitting him with pace if I don't hit him with pace he's gonna stick with me and it becomes a mental battle Got this, Nate. let's go so at the moment I'm surging to get a bit of a gap but I'm still conscious it's a mile to go and I'm not in the shape of my life so I definitely need to control this in a few meters time to avoid the risk of completely blowing up. Ooh. Let's go baby this is what I train for this is what I live for what a race it's been this boy's got a stride on him I can sense he's just gonna come back again. At this point over here, I had to make a last minute sidestep, but keeping concentration over there just keeps the rhythm and flow. My heart rate at this point is around 186 beats per minute. Not a massive amount of support this race, but all that little support helps so much, especially at this stage. Steaming ahead. Thank you, Amy, for your words of encouragement. It helped me so much, and you're an absolute legend for getting such quality race footage, given it's your first time ever filming something like this too. Okay, I've done the stretch of Battersea time and time and time again, and I'm thinking, I don't know if I've ever hurt this much whilst doing it, but you know what it's like. You finish the race, you get your breath back, and I think, actually, I think I have hurt that much before overtaking some fellow runners in the race here but i know we're all hurting and giving it our all so mad respect to everyone who raced as you can tell i am breathing very heavy i am deep into the red and i am hurting and there boom is the 4k mark 302 was that split but i know it's 1k to go you're suffering but you can always find something more in the last k especially when you can see that finish line let's go I am now facing a whole nother challenge. Keep I've made strong. my surge. I was with Morgan a lot from early on. I had so much adrenaline. I now can't hear anyone behind me. That adrenaline's completely gone. Yet I'm trying to increase my pace at the same time. And it is tricky. Six hundred meters to go. Just a lap and a half of the track. You versus you. regularly checking my watch doing absolutely everything i can to keep that average pace under three minutes per kilometer i know i'm not going to get my pb which is 1434 but this is a season opener i was never going to be in pb shape so it's all about seeing the absolute best i can do on this current day say say strong Right now, I have demons flying through my head saying, slow down, Nick, you do not need to do this. And every time I do a race, it blows my mind as to how many miles ahead, Nick, just miles have to ahead. walk away. And He's I also this. have so much respect Final for now. professional athletes out there that are able to show up daily, train and push their bodies to their full ability day in and day out. I know when I turn the bend it is 400 meters to go and here we are one lap of the track all you have got there's the finish line it's within sight 
when I started this last kilometer, my pace was around 304 per kilometer pace. It is now down to around 248 per kilometer pace. And I'm thinking, there's the finish. I can taste it. I can see my friends there. And this is what you train for. That last rep of track, when you're suffering, you're putting yourself through the pain for this moment right here. Those finish line feels. Come on. I am driving those arms to the best of my ability. I can see that clock ticking down. I'm pretty certain I've got sub 15 in the bag, but I want to absolutely empty the tank. I've got a mate of mine over from Turkey. There he is busy filming a reel. I am absolutely in the bin, but I'm thinking, Nick, hold your form. And boom, shakalaka. Official finishing time, 14.55. Let's go. Oh my word did that hurt i want to go lie under the tree right there and i realize sorry i'm in your way you can go past the guy i was speaking to i said i thought you'd do well yeah you were thinking yeah and i didn't know you that's amazing <laughs> thank you so much well done <laughs> i absolutely love that guy <laughs> And there's me congratulating Morgan. It wasn't his day, but you know what? He's got huge talent, huge ability, and I have no doubt he'll only get faster. Well done, champ. It was so tough. <laughs> if I go deep into the red too early, then it's going to be trouble steady. But I actually managed to face it so well, thanks to the Hearn Hill Harrier gentleman. Um, yeah, he was looking so smooth. It made it easier for me. And 14.55, um, I think. I'll take that all day long. Onwards and upwards from here. One thing left to say, boom, shakalaka, let's go. Here's a look at my heart rate throughout the race. A progressive, consistent build is exactly what you're after. Prior to this race, my heart rate max was 187. It is now 188. Whoop, whoop. New heart rate max hit. Thanks once again, Amy. You absolute legend for filming. Massive congrats to all who raced. Some amazing results, some PBs for the runners I coach, some really, really good performances from best athletics athletes, and just all in all, a good event. Thank you, Sri Chimnoy, and I'm looking forward to the Asics London 10K next weekend. Let's go.